It helps sometimes to fold it into shapes that are going to be more useful while you're using it. For instance, if you turn it on the back and just hold these back like this, you can see how to assemble these things a lot better. All we did was, this is the front, turned it over on the back, and then one, two, folded the points across so that you got a little square. All right, now, if you turn it back over, this is the side you're going to attach things to. This is the back. Back is smooth. Side that you attach things to has two little triangle pockets in the center square. These are not triangles because they don't make a triangle. One little pocket, two little pockets right there. You should be able to see them pretty clearly once you get to this point. Okay, these are the wings. Wings attached to pockets. So, I have some here I made earlier. Just attach a wing to a pocket, just like that. Now, if you want to make a cube, make a cube, you just have to remember that it has six sides, and each one of these squares is a side. So you, 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 you just look around for pockets and wings that connect like that, and you connect your, your pockets and wings and make your cube. And you kind of just figure this out as you play with it. It's really not difficult. It's just a matter of spending a little time playing with it until you get what you want, it, want it to do. Now, you have a cube. Very few steps in this project and what I used to do when I had a group of about 30 kids is I'd roughly divide them up into seven groups and each group would learn one step. That way, even if they couldn't remember all of them, each group would, each, you know, at least a couple people in each group would remember their step and they could still put these together because they really are a lot more fun when you have a lot of them. Like this is the cube. It takes six pieces, six, six uh, units to make it. But there are other things you can make with this too. And the kids used to love this one. I'll show you. make two little three-sided triangles and you put them together back to back like this you can get uh, yeah. One, two just wrap them around each other so they hold on I would sometimes teach the kids how to make some shapes, but I don't like to do that too much because then they think that's what this is for, to learn how to make a certain shape, and it really isn't. It's so that they can learn how to use it and connect the shapes, the, the units to make any kind of shape they can imagine. Um, the only limit to these is really... Um, how strong the paper is. Eventually, of course, you know, you're going to wind in, wind up having a limitation of how big something can get. But I'll tell you, I have seen pictures of 900 unit spheres. 900 of these, all made into this giant sphere. It's big enough for a small kid to walk into. Now, I don't know if they had to reinforce it a bit. They probably did. Because it's paper, you know. <laughs> but, uh, trying to make a, a larger one. This also you can make with all different kinds of paper. It doesn't have to be copy paper or origami paper. Um, 
I've done this with uh, construction paper, with um, I even done it with newsprint, but newsprint's awfully soft. It's a little bit too soft. This is construction paper and scrapbook paper. The nice heavy scrapbook paper works really well and you can get a lot of pretty patterns in it. you have. Um, it's not a dodecahedron. That has 12 sides. This has 24. I usually, I don't really know what it's called. I usually call it a dodecahedron because it's got twice as much. But anyway, everybody likes the star ball. And that's just one other thing you can make with it. The cube, the spaceship. With just two units together, you can make a wallet. With one unit, you can make a football. I never do that with the kids because then they play with the football in school and get in trouble. But the potential is limitless, and it's a lot of fun. It's like playing with Legos.